Hey, I'm Piano Bruce, and in this piano lesson, I'm going to be showing you what the notes are on the ledger lines for piano sheet music. First, we're going to identify what the ledger lines are, and then I'm going to be showing you some tips to help you read them faster. Plus, I'm going to be showing you some extra notation that we use in sheet music. Before we get into this, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an upload. And if you're interested in taking piano lessons online or in person, feel free to contact me. By now, you should know what the notes on the stave look like. On the treble clef, we have face written in the space, and for the lines, you can remember every good boy deserves football. On the bass clef, we have all cows eat grass for the spaces, and grizzly bears don't fear anything for the lines. Those are just some little sentences and words that you can use to help you remember which letter goes where. But what about those extra lines that you see sometimes when you're reading music? These are called ledger lines and they are just the extensions of the staves and they can go above or below it. The reason they don't have the ledger lines as an official part of the stave is because it would get quite messy if you had something like 20 lines to read from. So instead we only use ledger lines to add in the notes that we are going to be playing. To show you what this looks like in a piece, here's a section from Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven. As you can see, they don't add in the lines until you get to that particular note, and the line is only drawn to cover that small part. It does require that you still have to keep putting in extra lines for each note, but that still looks a lot tidier than having to put in all those extra lines that we talked about earlier. So how are we supposed to know which line is which on the ledger lines? If we start with the treble clef, we can work through the lines from middle C to go E, G, B, D, and the top line, which is F. So now when we go above F, we have to put in the ledger lines. We start with A, C, and E, which spells face, just like when you go through the spaces in the treble clef. If you want to go further than E, all you have to do is keep skipping notes to go G and B. Simple. For the spaces between the ledger lines, we can just fill in the gaps. So the space above F would be G, as it's the next letter in the alphabet. And notice that there's no line above it because you already have the line under it as a point of reference. From there, we can just skip steps again to go to B with one ledger line, D with two ledger lines under it, and F with three. You can see the same pattern of every good boy deserves football if you start with the top space, E, and carry on going up. You're most likely only to see up to the third or fourth ledger line because we can add in this sign, which means one octave higher or ottava alta. So this note can become this note and this one would become this one. In this piece you can see that the right hand has the octave higher sign which means that everything that would usually be played here as it is written should be taken up a whole octave to here. It takes some getting used to but with practice it becomes quite natural. You can also have ledger lines underneath the stave. This time the first line below the treble clef is the lovely middle C probably the first note that you learned on the piano. From here, we can just skip down the notes to go A and F, spelling face with the four lines, including the bottom line of the treble clef. In the spaces, we know that the bottom space is F, and from here, we can just skip to D, B, G, and E, with three lines above it. This time, we probably don't need to go lower than the third line because one, it looks untidy and it's likely to cross into the bass clef and two, why don't we just write them on the bass clef? 
To do this, we can add a little bass clef into the notation and it overrides the treble clef temporarily so that you can read the notes as you would on the bass clef. So these ledger line notes would actually be written here instead. Yes, the notes written here are exactly the same as these notes. It will take some getting used to, but I can show you a little sequence to help you out. Remember that the top step is mainly for your right hand and the bottom is mainly for the left hand. So it makes sense when we add the bass clef to the top stave because it signifies not only that you need to read it as the bass clef, but you have to play it with the right hand. If we look at how Moonlight Sonata was written, you can see that the right hand actually is written on the bass clef. Remember, if it hasn't quite sunk in yet, you can always go back to the beginning of the video. Feel free to watch it as many times as you need. Now that we've covered the treble clef, we can go on to the bass clef. Starting from the top, we know that the top line is A, then the line above that is middle C. The same as the one on the treble clef that goes underneath it. This means that anything above this can be potentially written in the treble clef. However, sometimes we do go above and beyond, and to do that, it goes middle C, followed by E, and then G. Basically, it's all cows eat grass written on the lines. Instead, we're starting with this one. And to fill in the gaps in between, all you have to do is add G, B, D, and F. Similar to before, when we added a bass clef to the upper stave, we can do the same to the bottom by adding the treble clef. This means that anything you read from here is treated as the treble clef. Have a look at the bottom stave on this piece and see how the notes are played higher up because they're on the treble part of the piano. You can see that these notes, if they were played on the bass clef, would be played here. But because we put a treble clef, we have to shift them all the way up to here. Remember that on a treble clef, we have to shift it up a couple of notes as well. So we don't just go up an octave, we go up a couple of notes as well. And finally, we have the ledger lines underneath the bass clef. Just for reference, I've moved the camera so that this is now middle C. We know that the first line here is ground G. So if we skip our way down through the lines, we can see a familiar pattern. E, C, A, and F if we go four lines below it. Spelling face. And in between the gaps, we have F, which is just below ground G, followed by D, B, and G or grizzly bears don't fear and the bottom space would be anything. So you can see how the sentences and the words that we use to memorize the letters of the stave can be copied and pasted to different positions to help you read the ledger lines. You remember that octave sign we used earlier to play the treble higher? There's also one for the bass clef if you would like to go an octave lower. To do this, we draw the dotted line underneath the stave and the key difference between going lower and higher with the octave is here. A stands for alta, which in Italian means high, so it means you play an octave higher. So to go down, they put a B instead of an A, which stands for bassa, or below. So you go an octave lower. Using this, these notes would now be played here. So you can see how you can avoid extending the ledger lines unnecessarily by simply writing ottava basa. Hopefully that's cleared things up a little bit. As with anything, learning all the notes of the stave takes practice before you can do it confidently, and it's certainly not going to happen overnight. Another tip that can help is by using landmarks which guide you through the stave. Start with middle C, then as you go up through the treble clef, you can mark out G, which is on the second line, treble C, which is on the third space, high G, which is just above the top line, and then high C, which is two lines above F. 
Get really used to where these notes are because it gives you signposts that you can work from to figure out the note that you're trying to play. That way you can just fill in the gaps. Landmarks for the bass clef just reflect the ones we used on the treble. Start with middle C, then you can go down two lines to bass F, and then go down a line and a space to C, which would be on the second space up on the bass clef. And then you can carry on going down to F, which is a space below the stave, and then you go down to C, which is two ledger lines down the bass clef. And that's it for this piano lesson on ledger lines. Let me know in the comments below if this helped you out and I can also answer any other questions you have. Remember to subscribe so that you can always see my latest video. As usual, I'll be creating many more tutorials like this and posting them weekly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.